Hi everyone, my name is Kevin Rooney and I'm here with the 2022 Kia Carnival today. This is the KoreanCarBlog.com. Um, there's a lot to talk about with this SX Prestige 2022 Carnival, so I have a cheat sheet of notes in case I forget to cover something. Um, so as you can see, this SX Prestige Carnival is in Astra Blue. And a couple of things about this particular trim level. Uh, this Carnival has the black wheels because it is one of the SX Prestige models, um, and as well as the satin chrome accents. So uh, that means that those, the, the front grille and all of this side chrome, it's actually a satin chrome, which is a little bit nicer than that glossy chrome that some of the lower models have. Um, another thing that you'll notice is these exposed headlamps. So all the individual components of the headlamps are exposed here. Um, and then you can see that there are high beams actually built into the grill, which is pretty cool. That grill is unique to the SX and SX Prestige. You're going to get a different grill if you go with one of the lower models of the Kia Carnival. Uh, this SX Prestige model starts around uh, $46,000, but from what I can tell, um, these cars sometimes are having a markup in the market just because of the market in general and also uh, the fact that there's a shortage of carnivals. The carnivals are all coming in from South Korea, so uh, we're waiting on inventory still. Um, as you can also see here, the SX and SX Prestige come with the LED fog lamps down here at the bottom, and then there is a functional air inlet on the side that helps with aerodynamics. Um, there's also this all-new Kia logo. One thing you get on the new Kia Carnival. Looks pretty nice, and on the front it's actually uh, an aluminum finish. Also, uh, your radar for your smart cruise control system is in the lower grille, and there are also some sensors up there at the top of the windshield. That helps it to have a fairly advanced smart cruise control system that uh, rivals pretty much all of the uh, models in the segment, except of course for Tesla, which continues to have the, the best of uh, those smart cruise control systems. There's also parking sensors front and back on the SX Prestige. Then uh, as we move around the side here, the side mirrors, which are power folding, those come with uh, LED turn signals in the mirrors. Also this C-pillar garnish here, which as I mentioned is in satin chrome. It has this signature pattern, which is actually embossed on there. Then as we come around the back, we have this uh, tail light bar, which is in the SX Prestige model, full LED. That being said, the lower lamps are actually incandescent turn signals and reverse lights there. Also on the back, you have a hidden rear windshield wiper. That's hidden at the very top, so you don't see that unless it's in use. Um, and then the last thing on the exterior I want to go over is those roof rails. So on these higher models, these are raised roof rails. And they include this floating rear part. That's so that you can tie things down at the top there. Really nice uh, set of roof rails. Uh, these don't come on the lower models, but on the SX and SX Prestige, you get these. Okay, so now I'm gonna start talking a little bit more about the functionality of this car, and it's gonna start with the key fob, which I have right here. As you can see, it also has the new logo on here. Um, you have your start-stop, so 
as long as you are um, as your car is off and locked you can use the remote start functionality um, and then also you have on the key fob the uh, automatic remotes for the left and right side sliding doors so I can demonstrate that pretty simple you just hold it down and it's going to open right up and then you can close it again another thing that's nice is that on this particular key fob you also have these side buttons uh, and there's obviously the lock and the unlock button but uh, what's cool is like if you hold down the unlock button it's going to actually open all of the doors at once So that's very practical if you're coming back to your car and you know you you have your kid in one hand and your groceries in the other hand uh, it makes it nice and easy to open up the car then same thing if you hold on this lock button it's gonna close everything at once it's a nice feature uh, one thing it one thing that that does not cover is if you have the windows open and you're leaving your car holding down the lock button will not also close the windows it just closes the doors so you have to remember to close your windows before you leave your car anyway. Um, so that's kind of the functionality on the key fob. Now let's uh, look at the interior of this 2022 Kia Carnival. Before I get into the second row, which is where I'm gonna start, I am gonna turn the car on. That will allow us to see all of the features of this car. So as I turn the car on, you will see there is an animation that displays over here. Actually, I think the animation may display differently depending on like how long you have the car off. Okay, but we'll, we'll come back to the front seat later. I'm going to start in the back. So I'm going to come around to the other side. Let me just close this first. So, obviously with it being a, a minivan, if you want to open this door, this is kind of like the, the second row is where it all starts. So because you have the SX Prestige version, this? the SX Prestige version has these captain's chairs and they're actually called VIP lounge seats and they have a ton of functionality so I want to show you guys everything that they can do just give me one moment to take one thing out Okay, so I'm gonna start the VIP tour with the ability to uh, move the seats either back and forward or side to side. So there's these two uh, handles here. And can you take this so I can... Okay, so down, down here, come closer please. Uh, there's these two handles. This one is gonna move your seat forward and back and this one is going to move it side to side the reason you want to move it side to side is because this can recline really far back and if you don't uh, move it side to side then you're not going to be able to recline it as far back because uh, there's the wheel well in the way so if I jump in here, come closer, please. Um, so, okay, starting off, you get these two armrests, one on each side, so that's just the first part of this. The next thing is you have, you, can you come closer, please? You have uh, these controls, power controls on the side of the seat.
these power controls in the VIP seat allow you to do a lot of things. So first of all, you have this switch here. That re is the recline, power recline of the backrest. This switch here allows you to move your seat up and down and tilt it back and forth. And this first one is for the leg rest. And I'm going to show you all of this in a second. There's also a button right here. This button allows you to fully recline or fully unrecline uh, this whole VIP lounge seat. And then furthermore, there's these two buttons here. This one fully reclines the lounge seat without the footrest. And this uh, allows it to come all the way back without the footrest. So let me show you this in motion. Great. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the seat all the way back to get the full use out of the VIP lounge seat. Come closer. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to move it all the way to its rear position. Can you see? Now because I'm six feet tall, the front seat kind of gets in the way a little bit. So there's actually special controls on the passenger seat that allow me to move this forward as well. So I can do that from the back. What that allows me to do is now, and then I can put my leg rest forward. So now I'm in full relaxation mode. Okay. So I'm just bringing it back up now. So it's really good for long journeys. It's extremely comfortable. Uh, the, the, the leather seating here is very nice feeling. And I want to show you a couple more things about this. So I'm going to bring it back up. So if you could come closer a bit. We also have this headrest. This is a luxury headrest that actually has the wing out functionality just like you would have in uh, an aircraft. Um, and of course, it also has raising and lowering functionality. Um, and as you can notice, the seat belt is built into the seat. So no matter where you choose to move this seat, you're always gonna be protected uh, as you use this vehicle. Now, a couple of other things about this seat. Uh, on the door panel, there is your heated and cooling rear seat. So imagine if the door was closed, you would be able to set this to your heated and cooling um, rear seat for yourself so that you can stay nice and cool. Um, beyond that, if you want to come for a moment, we also have our uh, air conditioning control at the back. So this has the auto climate control. You can change your temperature. You can change your fan speed over here and you can also change where that air is blowing out here and then you have um, let me turn the fan speed down uh, and then you have your air vents at the top which can cool you down and there's another one in the back um, okay so next thing is that you have some outlets here so right here you have a 12 volt and a household outlet. You also have USBs in both of the front seats for charging. So a lot of charge points right here. There's also quite a, quite a bit of storage. So you get these cup holders here as well as a little place to put your phone right between those so you don't have to use a cup holder for your phone. There's some storage down here. There's also storage in the door pockets. Uh, and of course, if you have your lounge seat back, you have access to these other cup holders which are normally for the third row. And then over here, this is how you open and close the door. So that is automatic, just like this. Again, there's your heated and cooling rear seats. One touch auto down 
uh, window and these back windows oh, I think I have it on a child lock but they don't go down all the way they go down almost all the way then you also have on the SX Prestige these covers those are manual they're not automatic and you have a grab handle here okay so um, the other thing I just want to let you know is that we have a child seat that we've hooked in here. It was very easy to uh, hook it up in here. Uh, it does not impact the screen here because this screen is very durable. So what we've noticed is that no matter what you do with these screens, they don't break. Um, the other thing that's really good about this seat is that, you know, uh, if you have your, your child here and you have the auto tilt, so let's say that you want them to be sitting a little bit more upright you can do that with the seat controls here or if you want them to be more reclined you can do that as well without having to adjust the car seat and the other thing is because you can move this other one back if you move it all the way back you get a really nice view of your baby if they're still in a rear facing car seat So I think it's really good for kids, and then you can kind of put this armrest down as well for a little bit more security. Okay. All right, the next thing that I want to talk about is these monitors. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything here. So with the rear seat entertainment, as I mentioned, it's really tough, like you can move it around. It's not gonna break on you. Obviously, you know, kids can break anything, but uh, it's, it's pretty sturdy. It also can tilt up and down to whichever level is right for what you're trying to do. This is a full touch screen. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the inputs. There are several inputs on the side here. There's uh, obviously HDMI. Sorry, yeah, HDMI, uh, there's an AV in, there's a USB, and there's the headphone jack. So to turn on these rear monitors, it's this button at the top. Um, and then there's a number of things you can do on these screens. So first of all, you can look at any of those inputs. So the USB is right here. If you want to go to your HDMI, uh, it is right there. Um, so that's that's really cool. Um, you also have these Wi-Fi apps. So uh, the the Carnival doesn't come with Wi-Fi, but if you have a Wi-Fi hotspot or if you want to connect it up to your Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone, uh, it has Netflix on here, uh, as well as Twitch and YouTube. Um, the other thing you can do is you can mirror your phone. Uh, to to do that, you have to download an app onto your phone called RSC Connect. That will also allow your phone to be uh, used as a remote control for both of the screens because there is another screen on that side and you can control everything through the remote app on your phone both Android and um, and Apple it's not like CarPlay it's 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 like a mirroring it's just gonna mirror whatever's on your screen so um, that's really nice but again it doesn't the car doesn't come with Wi-Fi you have to provide that either that Wi-Fi hotspot or uh, your tethering on your phone. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is the uh, ability for this to have the Bluetooth headphones. So you can connect a pair of Bluetooth headphones. It doesn't uh, come with the Bluetooth headphones. You have to supply those yourself. But one thing that's really nice about this is that there's actually a feature um, where you can change the offset of the lip syncing. So you know how sometimes you're watching on another device and like the sound is just like a split second off you can adjust that by degrees of a second uh in in the screen here i think you do that um through the settings uh which, which has quite a lot that you can do here um the other thing to talk about is the built-in functionality so you know we have the sounds of nature which okay you know you can listen to these different sounds of nature that's been heavily covered in the press um, but there's also the screen sharing functionality. So what screen sharing does is it allows you to show 
what's on your screen on the other screen because there's two screens here you can also use screen sharing so that both uh, passengers can be watching the same thing uh, the other thing is that through Bluetooth this screen actually connects to the audio of the car so that you can choose as the driver um, you know which source you want to listen to through the full sound system and you can hook up each of these tablets which um, you know are built into the seats you can connect them in the other last thing I want to talk about with this screen is the kids theme so as this is a van uh, there's baby shark built in so there's already this component where you can for your kids watch these built-in uh, baby shark videos and there's also some games in here as well and it's pretty responsive you know um, there's also the YouTube kids and then you can also like pre-program some kids content on a USB so that uh, the, the kids don't get too far into you know the part of the internet you don't want them on and you can lock it onto this uh, kids content or you can go back to default and like this is the the main thing where you can watch YouTube and all that so the rear entertainment system is pretty good um, I think uh, you know one thing that people have been talking about is that it's not removable you can't just you know take this off uh, it comes with it and it's gonna stay on um, so just uh, do with that while you will this system comes standard in the SX and the SX Prestige. It is not available in the lower trims, but I think there's an aftermarket uh, system that's available in those lower trims that has some different different things on it. So before I leave the VIP seats, because I talked a lot about those, those VIP seats, I, I did want to talk about some of the downsides to the VIP seats. <clears throat> and while I talk about it, I'm going to get out of the car really quick. So the downsides to the VIP seats. One of the problems is that these seats have a lot going on, so they actually sit higher up than the normal seats in the carnival. So for someone like me who's six foot tall, when I'm in the uh, second row fully upright, my headroom is not as great as it would be in the regular version of this car. Um, the other thing is this gives you much reduced access to the third row. So having these seats makes it a little bit difficult to get into that third row. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, there is no way to move the seat forward uh, in terms of like, you know, folding the backrest forward. You can't do that from the outboard side. You can only do that from those controls on the inside. So what that means is really the only way to get into the third row is to go through the middle of the captain's chairs. So that's one of the, you know, problems with having the VIP seats in this SX Prestige model. The other thing is once you get into the third row, and I'll show you this in a moment, but there just really isn't as much room in the third row with the VIP seats as there is with the regular seats. And that's because the seats are just longer and thicker so there's just a little bit less third row room back there. Uh, so, you know, I'd say that if you have a larger family uh, or if you're going to be using the third row more, it's probably better for you to get one of the uh, lower models like the EX or the SX. And I'll talk a little bit about those different trim levels in a moment. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is that if you choose not to have these VIP seats, well, you lose a lot of other features as well, which is kind of a compromise. So for example, the sunroof system that you have in this car, you don't get that if you go for a lower model. The uh, gauge cluster screen, you don't get that if you don't go SX Prestige. So, you know, it, it's a big compromise and I think people are gonna have to make a tough decision on whether they use the, um, the VIP seats and the SX Prestige and get all that other stuff or if you go with the SX or EX um, to get a little bit more space, a little bit more usability and practicality. So, you know, next next I am gonna talk about the third row in the cargo area. So before I do that, let me just move these seats back. Okay. And right now I have the third row down. So
So I will show you how to get that third row in place. So as we come around the back here, the place where you would open the trunk is actually in this slot here, not, not under the Kia logo there. So it is a power lift gate. Uh, and the power lift gate does actually allow you to have multiple heights and multiple speeds at which it would open and close. The other thing that is really amazing about the uh, about this carnival that other vans tend to have problems with is just the access to the cargo area. It's very uh, rectangular. It's not too curved at the top like some of the other cars like the Sienna and things like that. So it's like it's really practical for hauling. Um, as you can see with the second row seats up, and by the way, the other thing with the SX Prestige is you cannot put those second uh, row seats down and you cannot take them out. So you can't access the full you know, cargo space that you might have been able to with the lower models like SX or EX. Now here's this large cargo area, really nice size. And the way that you get these third row seats up, first of all, pull on this handle. It's very, very easy. So I'll do it again on this side. Right. Next step, there's some straps right here. You just pull on that strap. It's hard to... Hold on one second. Okay, so this is the third row seats up. So you can see there's some more cargo space down at the bottom. That's really nice. Uh, the other thing about this is that we have these power ports. We have another household style outlet here. Um, and then we have another 12 volt right there. So that's the, the cargo area. Pretty good size even with the third row up. Uh, and it has these additional storage pockets on the side. Oh, the other thing about these straps, by the way, they have uh, Velcro here, so you can just put those away a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to get into that third row, and first I'll close the trunk. Opening up the side. Okay, so now I'm gonna climb into the third row uh, and if you can follow me. So the only way to really get back here is to get in here and go through the middle. So a little bit tight. That's the only way to get into the back of the SX Prestige. Here, give me the phone. Okay, so now that I'm in the back, just wanna show you you know, with the second row seats in a normal position, this is how much space you get in the third row. So, you know, just not quite as much legroom as you would get if you were in the uh, SX or EX, just because these seats are longer and, and definitely thicker than the average seats. Uh, you can move these seats forward, of course, then that's gonna start impacting your second row legroom in favor of the third row so you know it's still definitely more practical than something like a telluride but i i just again i think if you go with the sx or ex you're just going to get a little bit more room in the third row there's also a strap here this is what you can use to recline your seat so as you can see it's a 60 40 split third row and it allows for a fairly uh, large recline angle and then you can put these headrests up and then you can be fairly comfortable back here in the third row. I just think that it's not quite as practical to have these um, 
VIP seats. And, and definitely, you know, with the VIP seats in this position, so for example, this one I have a car seat in, I would not be able to put another car seat in the third row. It's just too tight. Too tight for, a, for another one in the SX Prestige. Especially with my driving position there, because the driving position I have set for myself. Then I have the car seat. And I just, I, I don't feel like that's enough space for a, another car seat. So, you know, if, again, if you have a good sized family, I would definitely go for the SX over the SX Prestige. But of course it's going to be your call because, you know, those, those lounge seats are very impressive and, you know, it's a big reason why a lot of people are looking at this car, so. Okay, now finally, uh, the last thing I'm going to show on the inside is the driver's seat. So, let me close up this door, and we'll go look at the driver's seat. So of course with this being the SX Prestige uh, top level model, you have power seats. You also have memory power seats two stage memory okay and then another cool thing is you know uh, this is one of the first Kias to have one touch uh, front and back power windows so that's one touch up and down you also have power sunroofs so there's two sunroofs in this car, and they're controlled up here. So this is the front sunroof, this is the back sunroof. If I press them together, you can see they are both going to open. So you, so you do have both of those. Now when you close them, the power functionality only closes the glass. So what that means is that if you want to close this sunshade, you have to do so manually. Also another thing that this car has as I mentioned is the power folding mirrors and the control for that is right here, this top one. So that folds them in. Um, and then also, you know, one cool thing is that for these left and right, if you leave it over on either side, then when you shift the car into reverse, the mirrors are going to go down automatically. And then if you want to disable that, because some people don't like that, you just want to leave this switch in the middle and then moving it into reverse, nothing is going to happen there. Okay. So another thing for those um, family-oriented drivers, you're going to like this. These extra buttons allow you to open the sliding doors as well as the rear tailgate. And then this power door off button, when you hit that, what it's going to mean is that uh, all of those functions are turned off for the entire vehicle. So there's not going to be power uh, door operation if you have that selected. Okay, and then uh, the next thing to talk about is this gauge cluster. So the gauge cluster is a 12.3 inch digital display and you can have it in a number of uh, different modes. So right now I have it in what's called dynamic mode. Um, and in dynamic mode, it's going to show you this uh, view which changes depending on the weather, depending on the, um, depending on the time of day. So it's going to show you different images. Um, it's also going to show you your uh, turn signal cameras. So as you've probably seen many times, this is like a Hyundai and Kia exclusive feature. 
in the Carnival it's only available on the SX Prestige. This screen also shows you um, quite a, a number of other things such as pop-ups in the gauge screen when you uh, change your lighting. So for example if I were to move the lighting to on it's going to show me that in this nice graphic on the screen. Um, and then the other thing is that this screen can show other different types of gauges. So it can show like more traditional gauges and it shows them in different views depending on the drive mode. But just because this uh, view feels like more open and airy, it's what I like the best. And I think a lot of other SX Prestige um, drivers that I've seen on the web are also preferring this display. <clears throat> but it's up to you. You can configure pretty much everything on this car. Um, the other thing is that there's also some important information that can show up in this screen. So like if you leave your phone uh, in the wireless charging tray, it will let you know that when you turn the car off. Um, and you know if you have uh, if you, if you leave something in the rear seats, it's going to tell you that as you exit the car as well. So there's a lot of functionality in this 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster screen, but that's only available in the SX Prestige. Uh, the other thing is that um, right now, you know, you see these four icons. These four icons allow you to kind of move between different information that you might want to see in the car. This is really common for Kia vehicles. If you have navigation, it's going to show up right here as turn by turn directions. Um, and then you have your tire pressure here. Now, uh, something that's interesting about this car, uh, and I think maybe other Kia models that have this same gauge cluster, is that if you have a critical problem with your car, like if, if there's a failure in the car and your check engine light is on, there's going to be a fifth icon here. And the fifth icon is going to be something where you can go there and you can see exactly what is wrong with your car. So I think that's really cool. I mean, I haven't, I didn't hear about that before. This is the first car I, I read about it in the owner's manual, but I think uh, the Sorento also has this similar gauge cluster. So maybe that also has the functionality, but I think that's actually pretty cool. Um, also, there's another, there's another thing that I noticed while I was driving this car when I was in traffic uh, and I just looked, happened to look down this car will tell you if the lead car is driving away, even if you're not in that smart cruise control mode. So it'll tell you the car ahead is departing. It, it beeps at you and has like a little message. It's very uh, gentle. It's not like a harsh uh, notification, but it is you know very helpful in my opinion so that you don't have the person behind you honking at you. Okay, so that brings me to the smart cruise control the smart cruise control in this car is amazing, like I said. Uh, it's activated using this button on the steering wheel. And the smart cruise control in this uh, car has not only, you know, following the, the car ahead of you, but it also has highway driving assist, which uh, ha understands, like, everything about all the highways. So it keeps you right in the middle of your lane. It allows you to be on a more aggressive setting rather than uh, your your normal settings. Uh, so for ex let me give you an example uh, in my stinger I, I also have different modes of um, of the smart cruise control system I always put it on the most conservative setting when I use it because it just gets scary if you're in those aggressive settings you come right behind someone else and it kind of slams on the brakes and it's really scary with this car it's much better it will slow down more gradually um, but it won't leave a large gap in front of the car so I, I just feel like they've done a great job advancing the software on this functionality over the years. Um, so the other thing is you can auto set the highway driving assist to the speed limit. So when you get to that speed limit, it's going to have it like it's going to be green on your cruise control. Um, and then if you go over the speed limit, those numbers are going to turn red. It will absolutely allow you to go over the speed limit, but, you know, it's going to notify you when you have gone over the speed limit. And you can uh, customize that to alert you at the speed limit or like three miles per hour over or something like that. Like it's very configurable and very helpful. Um, there's also, you know, active braking, active, uh, it'll actively stop you from merging into uh, another lane where there's already a vehicle. 
so yeah that's smart controls uh smart cruise control system which i can't show you right now because i'm not going to drive the car right now but uh you know it will all of your information is going to appear right there um also on the side here this is where your lane safety is so this car also obviously has the blind spot monitoring system i don't know if you can see that little triangle at the top there but that's going to flash um okay so the other thing is what you'll notice this display is very configurable when i uh change it out of the lane safety mode it actually changes the way that the car looks with the lane and that is a carnival in in the gauge cluster so that's nice um Next thing is the gear shift. So this gear shift, uh, in, in Korea you can get like the rotary style gear shift, but in the US we're only getting this traditional shifter, uh, which also has the Tiptronic, and that Tiptronic allows you in sport mode to change gears on your own. Uh, moving down you have your electronic parking brake right here. Um, auto hold system, which means that if you ha have your foot on the brake uh, at when you're stopped, you can take your foot off the brake and it will remain stopped until you hit the gas. And then here's your drive mode button. The drive modes in this car are eco, normal, sport, and smart. Smart mode is a good mode to be in because it will understand if you're driving aggressively, it will shift it to be more sporty. If you're driving it more gently, it will shift into eco mode automatically. Um, there's also a few other buttons down here. You have your heated steering wheel and uh, parking sensors. So this is your heated steering wheel. This is your parking sensors. You can turn them on and off. Um, this blank button right here, I believe why this button exists is because they, um, in some markets, have an auto stop start feature, which is actually something that people tend to not really like. It's that function that turns your car off when you get to a red light and then you can turn it off. I think that's what this blank button is for. But the good thing is that the Carnival in the US does not have that feature. It does not have the auto start stop feature. I'm gonna get to climate controls really soon so I can talk about these in a moment. But the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the 360 degree surround view monitor camera system. When you press this button, it's going to show you uh, your top down view. And there's also multiple views that you can see you can see exactly what's going on with the back. I like this because if you do tow with this car, this is gonna show you exactly where your tow hook is. Um, you can have this view where you see both sides of the car and the top down view. Um, and then there's a bunch of settings. This car also uh, has a, a new version of this surround view monitor where it's a little bit smarter. What that means is that if you're driving and for whatever reason your parking sensor tells you that you're getting close to something, let's say that you're turning, uh, you know how some drive throughs have like a turn you have to make, it's kind of tight. Uh, if you get too close, the car will see, hey, you're, you're kind of close and it will on its own decide to display this surround view monitor to help you without you having to press the surround view monitor button. Okay. Um, now that takes us I, th I think the next thing i want to talk about is the climate control system so this is an automatic climate control system as you could expect um, for the sx prestige 2022 carnival uh, one thing i really like about the new kia models is the auto system the auto system has three different levels so it has low medium and high and and what's nice about that is that if you don't want the air rushing into your face you can change it to the low mode it'll still get you to your temperature but um it won't do it with such you know the loud and 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 very windy conditions that some people don't like so i, I really like that feature um then you have your normal you know fan speed um direction you can you can sync everything together um, and then of course because this car is a van it has this rear climate section uh, the rear climate section brings up a different menu on the uh, on the screen right here um, and it allows you to control the rear climate system um, so go out of that mode uh, the other thing you can do is you can actually control 
the uh, VIP lounge seats from the front because those are power seats and it has the uh, the control mechanisms there. So let me see if I can show you that. Um, I don't remember exactly where this is. One thing about this screen is that you can... Oh, here we go. Second row. So recline second row seat backs. So I can, you know, put the seats forward and back in the back. Um, you can also uh, have the driver's seat uh, slide back and forth automatically when you get in and out. And here's rear seat heating and ventilation. So you can control the back seats as well as the front seats through this screen. Um, the other thing about this screen is it's uh, configurable, so I believe if you hold these, you can actually uh, drag them around. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I don't want to do that. So, yeah, you can you can move these around. It's I think it's not quite as easy to do as some other things like you know your phone screen but you can completely adjust this screen to show exactly what you want um, the other thing about the rear climate controls you can lock people out of it so you know how you have this uh, control back here if you don't want your kids mess messing around with that you can turn it off right here by locking it then only you can control the rear climate pretty nice for those of you with kids which is probably why you would be looking at this vehicle um, okay and then as you know you can also control the passenger seat from the driver's seat so you got a lot of control here in the driver's seat um, okay so then I want to talk about the sound system so this is a 12 speaker Bose sound system so as you can see it has speakers all over the place speakers on the door which have the Bose logo. Very nice sound system. Uh, this car also has advanced uh, voice controls. So um, with this button right here on the steering wheel, if you hit this, it will allow you to um, do a lot of things. So for example, I can do... Please say a command. Find nearest Chevron station. Please say the line number. One. You will be guided to the first destination on the list. So as you can see, it's going to take me right to that nearest Chevron station. And it even has the little Chevron logo. So I think that's a pretty advanced voice recognition system. I, I generally don't use those because they tend to not really understand my commands. But this one is very very advanced um, this this car also allows you to connect multiple Bluetooth devices at once which is really helpful uh, especially if you have like um, you know multiple people in the car who want to connect um, and then you can just switch back and forth between the Bluetooth for Bluetooth streaming and anything you want to do for the Bluetooth uh, it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay but those are wired it does not have the wireless system, so you have to plug it into one of these USB outlets down here. Um, and then you have your wireless charger right down there as well. One thing that's cool about the wireless charger is it will tell you exactly when it is full, when you're at 100% battery on your phone. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the rear camera system. So this is a really nice feature, especially for uh, those of you that have kids. One thing that I noticed was, and I'm going to hit it now, it's called passenger view. Uh, when I was driving alone, like my, my wife wasn't with me, uh, and we had the baby in, in the car, so it's just me and the baby, I could use this so I could easily, and you can zoom in too, I could easily make sure that the baby was doing well um, while she was in the car. And then here's your passenger talk. If you use this, it, uh, it picks up your voice as the driver and it displays it in the back through the speakers. Then the other thing, because this is a split screen, you can hit this button right here. And this is where you can uh, see other things like what radio station you're listening to, the outside temperature, uh, calendar. I can't use this because I'm just borrowing this car. Um, your compass, time, your map. So 
you know, you can do a lot of things with this split screen. Uh, so you can continue to watch your baby and also know where your navigation destination is. And then you also have like all of your driving information here. So it's just like, it's super convenient, um, especially for those of you with kids. Um, okay, what else do I have here? Uh, quiet mode, you probably know about this as well. This is, has been advertised a lot. The quiet mode is going to make it so that the speakers only in the front are playing the music. There's not gonna be any noise in the back. Uh, and it also automatically brings you to level seven on the volume, which is like one of the lower levels. So it's gonna keep your passengers happy. Okay. Um, the other thing I just wanna mention really briefly, and that this will be the last thing I talk about in here, is storage space. So this is one area where I think some of the competitors have a better um, just, just a little bit better storage. So there's a little bit of storage here, you know, a little bit here, decent amount of size in there, but you don't have like a pass through system at the bottom here. It's just closed off. Whereas like, you know, cars like the Sienna have just a big storage area there. Also the door pockets are a little bit small, a uh, bit shallow, you know? So just think about that when you're getting it that, you know, the, the storage, in this car is it's still good it's 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 really good but it's not quite at the level of some of the other competitors so if you can live with that it's okay and then i really like you know the texture that you have here um it's very nice um one other problem you have here is there's a lot of piano black so a lot of this glossy black plastic everywhere um, you know, this is all glossy black plastic. As you can see, I actually cleaned this yesterday. It already has fingerprints all over it. Um, so that's that's a downside. I wish cars would, would stop. Car companies would stop it with the gloss black. Yeah, see here, here's some more. It's just like on the steering wheel. There's your new logo for Kia. That's pretty much it for the driver's seat. Um, oh, also one last thing, uh, you can configure this button to do anything you want. I, of course, configured it to automatically bring up my camera system for the back seats. Yep. Um, and I think that's it for the inside. So now let me go outside one more time and kind of show you the car again from the outside. So now what I want to do is I just want to talk a little bit about the uh, trim levels that this car comes in. This car starts at $32,000 with the LX model. The LX model has a seven passenger interior with cloth seats and it doesn't have any of that fancy uh, equipment that I just showed you. There you can see with the daytime running lights on, that's the shape that you get. Uh, the next level up from the LX is the LX seat package. And basically that is very similar to the LX except that it comes with an eight passenger uh, leatherette interior. And it also has a power driver's seat. Then if you wanna go up, the next level is the EX. The EX is $38,000. It also has the eight passenger leatherette interior. Um, and it comes with the 12.3 inch touchscreen. That's the center screen that I was just showing you. Uh, the automatic temperature control and 19 inch wheels and smart cruise control. So the EX is, is a good balance of features for a good price, $38,000. Then if you want more luxurious features, you're going to want to go with the SX. The SX is $41,000. It comes with the eight passenger leatherette interior. It comes with these black wheels exactly like this one has. And as you can see also on these black wheels, we have that new Kia logo. The SX also has the LED fog lights, the satin chrome, rear seat entertainment system, the power passenger seat, uh, ventilated front seats, and the surround view monitor. So the SX has a lot of those luxury features that people like. But then you need to go all the way up to the SX Prestige if you want those VIP seats. And now that model is about $46,000. 
It's seven passengers, full leather. This is the SX Prestige is the only version that has full leather. Um, the SX Prestige also comes with that 12.3 inch gauge cluster screen that I just showed you. It's the only model that has that. Uh, and it's also the only model that has the turn signal cameras. So again, like I said, like it's, it's really a compromise between the SX and the SX Prestige because the SX is just a little bit more practical but the SX Prestige has all those cool features. The other thing the SX Prestige has is the uh, dual sunroofs. All the other trim levels get no sunroof so that's just something to be aware of. A um, couple other things just to know this car is built in Korea it's not built in the US like the Telluride so uh, why that's important is it, it's much more difficult for them to get inventory in the US. So one thing that's holding people back from buying these right now is that it's just hard to find them on the lots. Uh, it's bigger than the Telluride, but it's not taller. Um, it, it is a little bit lower, so that means you get more space than a Telluride. Um, but it, it is just a tad bigger. It's also cheaper than the Telluride, so it might be a good choice for those of you who love the Telluride, but you know can't quite swing the payments, want something that's just as nice, but maybe doesn't have that SUV appeal. This car is available in that ceramic silver color. That's the same color as the Stinger. Uh, it's a slightly different color than the Wolf Gray on the Telluride and the K5, but it does, it is available in that color. And then today I was showing you the Tuscan Umber interior. That's the color of this interior. You can also get it in a black interior and the black interior version does have light gray armrests so uh, it's not fully black it's not it's not too overwhelmingly black on the inside um, but for me I really like this Tuscan umber let me just show you one more time because in pictures it kind of looks a little bit orange but in real life it's it's just a really nice tan color very very nice as you can see there you know, this is what it looks like in the sun. This is what it looks like when you're not in the sun. It's just, to me, that I would have to go with the Tuscan number if I chose this vehicle. Last thing I want to do is tell you what this car does not have because uh, you don't want to pay 50 grand because, I mean, you're looking at about 50 grand for this fully loaded after tax title license and everything. And I've heard that some people are even putting markups on these cars at the dealers. Um, so you don't want to pay 50000 and then get home and realize, oh, it doesn't have this. So now I'm going to tell you what it doesn't have so you know. First of all, it does not have automatic forward windshield wipers. A lot of people have been talking about this. These windshield wipers are not automatic. And at $50,000, you'd be kind of expecting that. Ironically, it does have a an automatic rear wiper when you're in reverse. It does have that one, which to me is not very useful at all. The automatic front windshield wiper is much more useful, but that's how they've decided to package this vehicle. Uh, the next one is it does not have all-wheel drive. No all-wheel drive at all in the Carnival. Um, yeah. And then uh, it does not have a hybrid powertrain option. No hybrid available on this vehicle. It does not have the auto stop start. That's actually something people are probably going to be happy it does not have. I'm definitely happy about it. Uh, it doesn't have LED uh, turn signals and reverse lights in the back. Those are just incandescent down there. So you pay a lot of money and it's not full LED. There's also some LED lights on the inside that are not LED. Sorry, there are some, what I meant to say is, there are some lighting on the inside that's not LED, such as the lights under the visor. Uh, and the license plate lights on the back are not LED, so uh, easy enough to swap those out in the aftermarket though. Also, there is no higher trim level available in the US on this vehicle. In Korea, uh, they have a limousine variant, which has a high roof, and it has like heated and cooled cup holders and things like that. You don't get that in the US. The SX Prestige is, is the best you can get here. Um, yeah, and, and just last thing I want to talk about is performance. So I've been driving it for a little while now. Um, 
It has a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 with 290 horsepower and 248 foot-pounds of torque. Comes with an eight-speed automatic transmission. It's not a dual clutch transmission, just a standard eight-speed automatic transmission. Uh, it's front wheel drive, as I mentioned, no all wheel drive available. However, all of that being said, it has a lot of performance. It has linear power delivery, which means that you know, you're not gonna feel any hesitation when you hit the gas and no, no, um, no annoying shifts. It's, it's just very uh, responsive. Uh, it's, it's definitely not fast, especially because that V6 engine only has 248 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, for such a large heavy vehicle, but you know, it's, it's, it's everything that you need in a van Now one thing that's amazing about this car is the cornering so for something that's so big and so tall It corners so well like going around uh, These tight corners. It's just been no problem very little body roll I think you'll be very happy with the way that it performs in that regard It also has like pretty good ground clearance you know, one, one thing about vans that's different than SUVs is that the ground clearance is sometimes uh, not that great in a van, but this one is pretty good and it sits, it sits high. So very uh, easy to manage and it's not going to um, bottom out on those uh, tall driveways. Um, finally, fuel mileage, it gets 19 miles per gallon city. It gets 26 miles per gallon highway and 22 miles per gallon average. That's the EPA numbers. I was not able to get anywhere near that. I was getting somewhere around 15 miles per gallon. That being said, I was pushing it pretty hard. So on an average uh, day, you'll probably get low 20s. But again, it's not available in a hybrid, so you can't expect those same gas mileage numbers. And that's pretty much all. Um, not sure if anyone has any questions. If not, I'm going to sign off. My name is Kevin Rooney and this has been the KoreanCarBlog.com looking at the 2022 Kia Carnival. Thank you everyone.